Hi, and welcome to Discworld Noir. Now this is a game I've been planning on playing for years and years and years. I've played the first two Discworld games, but this one has always eluded me. And it was partly because it was so difficult to emulate or record or something. And of course, because I decided to play today, my na neighbors have decided to start hardcore drilling. So, uh, that's fun. Oh, and also, if you click anything else in this menu besides New Game, the game crashes. It's just, this game has got a lot of attitude. Let's start a new game. I've had some bad days since I started work as a private investigator, but I'd never woken up dead before. It all started the week before, on a cold and wet September day in Ankh-Morpork, the oldest and most depraved of all the cities on the Discworld. But hey, you've got to love it. I'd been working as a P.I. for a little over a month, and business was slow. Hiring an investigator to look into your business requires trust, and the amount of trust in Ankh Morpork wouldn't fill a cup. And it's a small cup I'm talking about. Sure, people trust that you don't get on the wrong side of the patrician. People trust that you don't walk into the shades alone. People trust that the Assassin's Guild will fulfill their contracts or double your money back. Yeah, people even trust death. Just don't ask them to trust their mothers. Mr. Luton? If I'm not, I should fire the guy who painted the door. So this is what a private investigator looks like. I expected someone more heroic. Heroism costs extra. What can I do for you, Miss... Mrs. Actually. And the name is Carlotta. 
Okay, Mrs. Actually. Carlotta it is. What's a girl like you doing out on a night like this? I want to hire you, Mr. Luton. Please call me Luton. Mr. sounds so formal. How much do you charge for a simple investigation? I don't know. I've never had a simple investigation. A tricky one is 20 a day. I'll give you 200 in advance, plus expenses. For 200, I guess I should treat you with some respect. Oh, I wouldn't ask a guy like you to attempt the impossible. What's the case? I want you to find a man named Mundy. Why do you want to find Mundy? Do you know him? No. And this case will go a lot faster if you let me ask the questions. You like to be in control, don't you, Luton? If you don't pull the strings, then you're the puppet. Tell me about you and Mundy. I've been a lonely woman, Luton. You amaze me. You'd be surprised. Shocked, maybe, but not surprised. Mundi is my lover, Luton. Or used to be. He's been away for a while, over in Sort. He came back to Ankh Morpork a couple of days ago on the Milka. But he didn't come to see me. I think he may be having an affair. You're wondering whether my husband knows about it. Actually, I was wondering when you were going to give me the money. My husband passed away several years ago. I hope the poor guy was smiling at the time. Is there anything you can tell me about Mundy that might help me find him? He's got blue eyes, brown hair, and a black heart. You'd like him. Has he got any friends in Ankh-Morpork? Does anyone? How tall is he? I don't know. I don't picture him standing up. Oh, wow. <laughs> what was Mundy's business in sort? I don't know. I never asked about his work, and he never told me. Must be a very straightforward relationship. As simple as they come. Where can I find the ship he came in on? Down at the wharf. Have you been there yourself? I avoid places like that. Women and seamen. Uh, forget I asked. Women and seamen, she wanted to complete that set sentence with. This is a bad neighborhood for you to come into alone, Carlotta. I can take care of myself. Yeah, you could smash a couple of heads with those breasts. I believe you. Good. Good. Trust is important. I said I believed you. I never said I trusted you. Don't you like me, Luton? I like a lot of things. I like dogs, but I wouldn't trust one not to bite me. I won't bite. Shame. <laughs> this is awesome. I haven't been bitten in a long while. I'd better get started on your case. Where can I contact you? I'll be in touch. Be seeing you, Luton. I hoped I would see her again, because she still hadn't paid me. Oh, still, yeah. Still, it wasn't every day that a beautiful <laughs> woman offered me a case. And you can't refuse that. Frankly, it wasn't often that anybody offered me a case. And 200 would certainly help pay the rent, if I had anything left over from my bar bill. Bit of a drinker, huh? I guess we are a, a P.I. Nice sound effects. So we are Luton, a PI, and we have been given a case by a beautiful woman to find a Mundy. Sapient pearwood comes from a plant so magical that it is totally impervious to all forms of magic, and so valuable that thieves have cut each other's throats to own it. Unfortunately, I couldn't afford a desk made out of it, so I made do with pine. That's still pretty valuable. It's a nice desk, though. Yeah, it's a nice desk, given that everything nowadays is just uh, cardboard. I had purchased a large indexed scrawl rack to keep track of all the cases I was going to handle. How's that going? The Monday case made it two. That's a lot. Yeah, good going. Profitable business. Can I take any? Oh, oh, I clicked on myself. My inventory is a bag, of course. 
I have a purse. It's a very stylish purse. My purse might not have been my most valued possession, but I sure felt happier when it was full than when it was empty. I think everybody feels that way. Okay, I can drag things to use them, I guess. Notebook. Carlotta had hired me to track down Mundy. At the beginning, that was pretty much all I knew about him. And that he uh, had brown hair, blue eyes, and a black heart. The Milka was the tramp schooner that Mundy had come in on, and I knew it was birthed at the wharf. Birthed. Birthed. That's a difficult word to say. Now, I am going to be saving a lot in this game because I never know when this is going to be crashing. It's so temperamental. A lot of strange things had happened to me since becoming a private investigator. But the weirdest was the irrepressible sensation that the most important thing for me to own as a PI was a door with my name painted on the glass. That's the life. Once you know you have your name painted on a glass, you are a true PI. Some mysteries are best left unsolved, I guess. With CMOT Dibbler, you could say bye to quality. I don't know what I pressed. I'll say this for the ICBM. It made coffee strong enough to blow your head off. On the downside, the imp tended to use most of the beans to fuel its own addiction. Some days the poor thing was so jittery the coffee machine would vibrate off the shelf. All right, let's go uh, to the uh, ship that Carlotta told us about. I didn't see anything else that I could pick up. Nope. To the ship. Luton's office. So this is the city of Ankh Morpork. A beautiful name for a city. I can't go anywhere else except for the wharf. The wharf was on the upmarket side of the river in the city of Ankh. The Morpork docks on the other side of the river were not a place wise travelers disembarked at. But then again, wise travelers tried to avoid Ankh Morpork altogether. But if you traveled a lot, it was hard to miss. Like malaria. But it's a lovely city. It's full of character. If you've played the previous two Discworld g games, you're gonna see it's just full of palpable character. Sometimes smells actually embodied, and you could talk to smells. Uh, particularly bad smells. But let's talk to a sailor. Hello, sailor. The sailor was busy loading the ship, and I decided not to disturb him. Alright. A crate. A crate. What more could I say? A crate. The crates on the wharf were built on a large frame, sturdy and thick. Oi! Get away from that! A lot like the sailor. Wh what part of Neverland are you from? It's an interesting accent. So he's not gonna get, let me inspect the crates, huh? Alright. Ship. Oh, ship. The Milka was a tramp schooner. One of the many ramshackle ships that plied their trade around the Circle Sea. From the looks of it, it should have sunk years ago. Even the rats thought twice before boarding it. Uh, Mr. Scoplet. The first mate wasn't as hostile as I might have expected, but he wasn't particularly helpful either. We haven't talked to him yet. Are you the first mate? Ah! Ah! Shiver me timbers! Hoist the main brace! Let's start again. Are you the first mate? Hoy! That I be! You're not going to get any money off me, so you can drop the fake accent. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you know how it is. Yeah, tourists and all. Actually, they didn't have that many tourists in Ankh Morpork because nobody wanted to go there. Some people are stupid enough to fall for that sort of thing. Yeah. You kind of sound like Hagrid. You're a wizard, Harry. What can I do for you? I will slap you. No, I will talk to you. When do you sail? As soon as we've got her loaded. How much is passage? Where are you looking to go? I don't know. Places? Sort, perhaps. We've just come from there. 
It'll be a long time before we get back there again. Did you bring any passengers? Sure. Sure. We always try to take a couple of passengers. They pay their way, and if there's a big storm, they are very useful as to sacrifice to the angry sea gods. Of course, we tell people they were washed over the side. Yeah, you don't want any legal issues. The Milka's passengers. Sacrifices. Do you sacrifice passengers often? No. The captain doesn't like it. He says it's bad for business. I said that we were advertising ourselves as offering an exciting tour of the Circle Sea. But he pointed out that most people would expect the tour to be above the water. If I'd had my way, we'd have thrown some people off the last voyage. Bad omens? The whole crew had a bad feeling of dread from the moment we set off. Looking at the state of the ship, that doesn't come as a surprise. What were the passengers on the last voyage like? There were three of them. One of them seemed all right, but the other two... One of them was a wizard, let me guess. I don't know about them. There was something strange about them. Strange how? Oh, we're gonna notebook you to death. What do you know about a woman named Carlotta? Doesn't ring any bells, I'm afraid. Any bells? Doesn't ring any bells. What was strange about these passengers? I don't know. One of them seemed kind of... foreign. Oh, not foreign. I mean more foreign than most. That's the worst. So you're not really telling me much. What if I pay you? I suppressed the urge to ask for money. <laughs> I didn't want to ask for money. I was broke, sure, but I wasn't that desperate. I think we're desperate enough. Well, safe voyage, if that's possible. The first mates didn't look particularly willing to let people aboard. I would like to get on your ship, though. Huh. I already don't have any locations other than the wharf and my office to go to, so there's probably more at the wharf. Oh, he's gone! Hey! I... I couldn't carry the crates even if I wanted to. Oh, come on. You've got... Uh, adventure game character pockets. They're, they're limitless. A crate. A what crate. more could I... S oh, come on. The, the sailor was very adamant about not letting me close to them. I couldn't tell what the crates contained, and frankly, I didn't much care. Outgoing cargo wasn't going to tell me much. Outgoing I needed cargo. to know whether Mundy had brought something with him. Like what? First mate. Still here? Not from. Okay. Oh, so I can, I can go to cases if I click here. It's contacts and suspects, and then cases. Let's talk about the Mundy case. Mundy Milka. Let's talk about the this ship. is the Milka, isn't it? That's what it says on the prow. On the prow? It's impossible to read anything written on that hull. Just because you can't read it doesn't mean it isn't there. Reality is subjective, after all. Don't get all existential with me. It was more ontological than existential. That's a really bad habit you've got there. What? Who? Oh. Sorry. I picked up a bad case of philosophy in Ephebe a couple of years ago, and I haven't been able to get rid of it since. Yeah, it seems terminal. Just can't seem to shake it off. Normal as anything one minute. Next moment, I'm wondering if anything can truly be said to exist. A bit of a drawback when you're supposed to be navigating. Yeah, you gotta keep focus on the ocean, not the uh, existential torment of humankind and everything alive. Okay. Assuming the existence of an objective shared universe, is this the Milka? Yes. Can I have a look on board? No. Why not? That better not be some kind of philosophical objection. No one gets on board without Captain Jenkins' permission. Where is the captain? Oh, I don't know. But you could try the Cafe Ankh. Ah, new location. He usually goes there when he's in Ankh Morpork. If it exists, of course. Yes, if it exists. Was there a man named Mundy on the last voyage? 
It's funny you should ask that. You're the second person today to have an interest in Mundy. You don't say. Who was the first? A dwarf. He didn't give his name. I don't think he was from round here, though. Ah, a foreigner. What about Mundy? What was he like? I don't pry into the passenger's business. But for a man who came on board pretty happy, he seemed pretty unsettled when he left. Not that I blame him. Something was definitely amiss on this last voyage. Do you know where he is now? Mundy? No. And like I said, I don't pry into passengers' business. Unless you actually look through their luggage after they've been washed over the side. Hey, what are you inferring? I'm not inferring anything. I'm implying that you might have had a look at their luggage at one point. If I had, I certainly wouldn't admit it to you. That'd be stupid, right? <laughs> Which either means you didn't look, or you didn't find anything of interest. You better watch your step, son. It's not good to make accusations like that. Don't worry. Anything we discuss is strictly between you, me, and anyone else I tell. It's pretty intimate, and very private. It might include the police. Inquisitive Stranger Since that was who I'd learned about that from in the first place, I didn't feel I had much to gain by going over old ground. You are very cor correct, sir. You're a very good PI. Alright, let's go to our new location. Café Ankh. Where is that? Luton's office, Café Ankh. Oof, whenever I see a cutscene, I just fear it's gonna crash. <laughs> it's kind of iffy with cutscenes. We have two ways to go. Well, let's go to the sideway, because I can't help myself. Oh, Golem. The Golem was loading wine barrels onto the cart, calmly and diligently. I would have pitied it, but there didn't seem much point. It was just magically animated clay. In the movie Going Postal, there's also a golem, and uh, I remember he was pretty, pretty funny. Give me the crowbar. Pick it up. I figured the golem wouldn't notice that the crowbar had gone missing. Not that I'm saying it didn't need it, just that I'd figured I'd get away with stealing it. Wow, that's very <laughs> dramatic music for <laughs> picking something up. I decided not to try stealing the wine barrels. Oh, but it wouldn't notice it, would it? The cart was being loaded. Apart from the wine, I can't say I was interested. So, you were interested in pretty much the only thing in the cart. <laughs> but other than that, you weren't interested. I guess I never really noticed that the Café Ankh had a wine cellar before. Perhaps if they'd run out of drinks at the bar, I'd have been more inclined to investigate. Can I use it? I knew full well that I wouldn't be able to get down there without permission and the right key. Would the right key be a uh, crowbar? How do I use things? Let's take the crowbar, click away, use the trap door. You can't go around jimmying every door open just because you can. Since when? Besides, I liked some ale, and I drew the line at breaking into the cafe's wine cellar without his permission. At least for now. How do I discard <laughs> the, the crowbar? Was being a pop I don't know how to discard the crowbar. Guess I perhaps. Yes. 
Rascal's Tale Broken Drum L Wondering how long till you meet it again on the bank of the bank Too much to drink You could barely even think Too much bare heart I thought I told you never to play that song again Oh, sorry, Mr. Luton. It's just I wasn't expecting you to call by tonight, and... You weren't expecting me? It's only been eight years, Samael. I guess my memory ain't what it used to be. I don't know why Samael put up with my temper. He could have broken every bone in my body if he'd wanted to. But that's what made him special, I guess that he'd take almost any kind of abuse from the clientele and he'd still be there at the piano, playing better than anyone else in Ankh Morpork. Poor vampire. And that receding hairline. Wow. The pianist, Samael, was one of Café Ankh's greatest assets. Not only was he a first-rate musician, but there was something about him that made you think it'd be a bad idea to start any trouble. You know, maybe it's the angle, but it, the vampire's face is huge. Like, humongous. He must be a very tall vampire. Samael. I decided not to disturb Samael while he was working. Alrighty then. Let's see what we can steal. Nobby. <laughs> His name is Nobby. Let's talk to Nobby. Hello, Nobby. Eh. Uh... Hello, Luton. Um, how you been keeping? I've been worse. Of course, I've been better, too. And I've been a hell of a lot better and not much worse. So everybody's good. Okay, let's move on. That's good. Yes, it is good. Isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. Don't worry. If Commander Vime sees us together, I'll tell him I made you talk to me. <sighs> It's not that I don't like you, Luton. I mean, we was friends and all. But it's just... Well... It's just he'd bite your head off if he saw you talking to me. He'd go spare. So they've got a little bit of history that we are not aware of, but... Seems intense. He's, he looks like a city guard or a military guy. How you been keeping, Nobby? How's the rest of the watch? Not so bad, Luton. Been keeping myself busy. Been working with Sergeant Colon. Colon. How is old fatty Colon? <laughs> Still fat. <laughs> I'll tell him I saw you. No, you won't. Okay, so maybe I won't. I was just being trite. Polite. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Let's talk about the old days, Nobby. I guess I never really understood why it was that you didn't get kicked out as well, Nobby. Me? I ain't never done nothing wrong. Don't give me that, Nobby. When you were serving as quartermaster under the Duke of Pseudopolis, it was widely known that several items from the stores were found in your kit. That was all above board. I had all the paperwork for him. Your kit at the time consisted of two warehouses. I just think Vimes had a grudge against me. Luton, I know you're my friend and all, but uh, you took a bribe. Are you trying to tell me you never took a bribe? Never. The ham from Harga's House of Ribs? Evidence. The pocket clock from the Suicide in the Shades? I wanted something to remember him, boy. The money in the petty cash box? Mislaid by someone. Misappropriated by you. I never misanthropated anything. I just want to understand why it was that you could get away with all your petty theft and I couldn't get away with one act of weakness. That's what life is like, Luton. It's unfair. And also, don't, don't take bribes, kids. Well, um... You see... Um, Did you rat me out? Are you a little snitch? Just say it, Nobby. I'm not gonna hold it against you. Well, I reckon Mr. Vimes 
thinks that a bit of petty theft ain't something to get excited about. I ain't admitting anything, mark you. Nothing's ever been proved. Got compared to some of the stuff that goes on in this city. But someone who's taken a bribe, well, that's like allowing the rich to avoid justice. That wasn't why I did it. I know. But you know Vimes. Yeah, I know Vimes all right. What's Vimes up to these days? He got married. Married? Married. He was only ever married to his job. Nah, straight up. He married into the nobility. Old stone face in the nobility. <sighs> That'd drive him crazy. Well, he's sought nobility himself now. What? They made him commander of the watch. And we got a great new premises down on Pseudopolis Yard. They're full of patents and vases and all sorts. Full? Well, maybe not as full as when we moved in, but pretty full. I'll have to call round sometime. Yeah, that'd be good. We got a lot more members in the watch these days. And we got a new dartboard. Life in the fast lane, huh? Do you seriously think it's a good idea for me to call around? I mean, Vimes isn't gonna like it. Whatever you may think about him, he's loyal to his job. I can't say he'll welcome you with open arms, but he won't stop you. So we were a part of the watch at one point, but took a bribe. And apparently that was a big no-no. And it is a big no-no. Don't take bribes. What do you know about a woman named Carlotta? I'm not getting drawn into anything while I'm off duty. Wait till I'm back at the yard. Has there been a dwarf around asking questions? Can't this wait till I get back to the yard? Not really, and it's m more private here. I'm off duty. Hmm, come on. Do you know anything about some passengers that came into town by ship a few days ago? That's not much to go on. You're a corporal in the watch. They brought that regulation in after I joy. Do you know anything about a man named Mundy? I'm not getting drawn into anything. Wait. All right, he doesn't really want to talk to me about cases. Have you... He'd arrived in town a short time ago. How long ago? Three days. That's strange. Why? Well, there's been a string of odd murders in the last three days. Odd murders, you say? What do you mean, odd? Odd. I mean, this is Ankh-Morpork we're talking about. I'm not sure I should discuss the details with the pavilion. Oh, come on, we're friends. Or we were, at least. A civilian, Nobby. How much have you had to drink? I'm as sober as the day I was born. Ah, that's a frightening thought. <laughs> Mysterious murders. Since that was who I... Okay, so I'm not gonna get more about the murders from Nobby. I'll catch you later, Nobby. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Don't take a bribe, because I, I did that. What's that supposed to mean? Well, don't get caught doing anything I wouldn't do. He's proven that, uh, he hasn't been caught yet. Or nothing has been proved yet. Captain Jenkins. Oh, that's the guy I need to talk to. Right, we were here to talk to the captain. And there's more. Are you Captain Jenkins? That depends on who's asking. Don't play games. I'm just after a few answers. That song really put you in a bad mood, didn't it? If you're trying to get me angry, it's working. No need to get upset. If I drank any more than I do now, I'd never think again. Blast the tiki. So, you're the captain of the Milka. Unfortunately. Unfortunately? Ordinarily, I'd be happy being a captain of a fine ship like the Milka. But after this last voyage, I'm thinking of taking up farming. Tough journey? I don't want to talk about it. Well, it's funny because we will. What was so bad about the last voyage? I told you I don't want to talk about it. How about I get you a drink and then we talk about it? Sometimes it helps to talk about these things. Why would I want to talk about it? 
All right, let's put that another way. I want to talk about it, and the sooner I finish talking to you, the sooner you can get back to drinking. Sounds like a pretty good deal. You should take it. By that logic, my best bet would be to just ignore you and carry on drinking. No, no, no. It's not an option. I didn't give you that option. I was never much good at logic. I did home economics at school. That's still very useful. I was hoping you'd let me have a look around on the Milka. I was hoping that I was gonna make enough money to be able to buy myself a harem of exotic dancers called Chantel. But it looks like we're both gonna be disappointed. So you wanted a harem of exotic dancers all called Chantel? I get that just gets confusing. Is there any way I can persuade you to let me on your ship? Is there any way I can persuade you to go away? Well, no. Do you know anything about the recent murders in Ankh-Morpork? I know that there are always murders in Ankh-Morpork. Yeah, but the recent ones. See Ankh-Morpork and die, they say. It's a good slogan. Often in the same day. Effective. That's not a very helpful answer. It wasn't a very sensible question. What do you know about a woman named Carlotta? There no one I know. On your last voyage, there were three passengers, right? Monday and two others. You tell me. You seem to know more about my ship than I do. I just want to know what you can remember about them. I remember that we picked them up in Ecclepon, and I know they had a lot of cargo. Oh, and one was a woman, and one was a man. I think. You think? <laughs> Maybe because they were dwarves, and dwarf women and men you lo think looks so he was similar. A man? There was something particularly foreign about him. I'm not sure what. Where's Ecclepon? Up near the hub. God's forsaken place. All there is to do there is drink and eat fish sandwiches with no tops on. Sounds like a long way from the Circle C. We got lost, all right. It's easy to mix up port and starboard when you've drunk too much port. Are they still on board? Nope. We dropped them in Aunt Moore Pork. And before you ask, I have no idea what they were doing here. That's not my business. I was beginning to realize that Captain Jenkins only had two questions to ask his passengers. Where are you going? And how much money have you got? Well, it doesn't need to be more complicated than that. Has there been a dwarf around asking questions? Oh, he wouldn't know anything about that. Oh, I think you would. Hmm, I guess you wouldn't. I understand you are carrying a man named Mundy on your ship. What's it to you? I was hoping to find him. Owes your money, does he? No. He's an old friend. Him? You must think I'm as drunk as I look. Aren't you? Well, okay, so maybe I am. What did you want to know? Where is he now? I've no idea. We picked him up in sort a couple of weeks ago and we brought him here. That's about all I want to know about him. Did he say what he was coming to Ankh-Moor Pork for? I think he said he was meeting someone. Meeting someone, eh? Who? Oh, I can barely remember me own name, let alone something I overheard through a doorway last week. The mi You know nothing about ships, do you? She looks like exactly what she is. A run-down tramp schooner with no future. Any chance I could... Look around her anyway? All I want to do is get the cargo loaded and get out of this God's forsaken city. I don't need people snooping around on board. Well, I think I'm done talking to you. Again, you didn't really tell me anything useful. You just told me that Monday was meeting some someone, but no name, no location. Ah. Okay, there's another part of this, part of a room in the bar. Anything to pick up from here. The bar. I'll just pick up the bar. Oh, there's... Ooh, this bar is huge.
My old friend, the bar. Good old pal. I was tempted to order a drink, but I was working. I think alcohol would just help in your, in your investigation. I suppressed the urge to get myself a drink. Although I could really have used one. Yeah. Yeah, me too, actually. But you should, you should get a drink and talk to the people and get drunk and they'll tell you more things that they didn't plan on telling you because alcohol. Hello again. Oh. Hello yourself. Hello yourself. Uh, I don't really want to talk to you anymore. So let's get out of here because I think we did get a new location from someone. Is the golem cut coming out again? Yes. Can I talk to the golem? There was no use trying to talk to the golem. It couldn't speak. Oh, I thought I could go down there. Well, maybe not yet. Café Ankh. What else have we got in here? Pseudopolis Yard. Oh, they're, they'll be happy to see me. The Wharf. Okay, so we just have the yard. I headed over to Pseudopolis Yard, but Nobby wasn't there yet. Okay. I decided to come back later. We will come back later.